good afternoon. It's a pleasure to uh, um, be again hosting this uh, Ch Innovation China Forum. So uh, this year's um, theme is a uh, circular common economy and digitization. So the SAFE Foundation, so Shanghai Strategic, Strategic Emerging Industries Foundation, or SSEIF Foundation, was co-founded by Mitsubishi China and the CF Venture Capital. So we have the foundation's theme, which is to promote hard technology, uh, bridge the East and the West, and uh, be a platform for open innovation and uh, open entrepreneurship. So we have Mitsubishi Shanghai representative here. Thank you. So uh, just a few sh a short words about CM Venture Capital. So we invest primarily in four industries, digital, materials, industrial, which is advanced manufacturing, energy and the environment. And we have already uh, 17 portfolio companies. And uh, our limited partners, we have uh, uh, Savic, DSF, Samsung, GE, DAT, and Hanker, and many other LPs. So we are also launching a new fund today, and we welcome more MNC companies to join our ecosystem. So at the Innovation China Conference, we, the, our first one was in 2013, and then we did that one together with UCLA Anderson Business School. And from 2015, we have discussed the venture capital in hard technology. In 2016, advanced manufacturing. 2017, digital industrial. 2018, advanced materials. And then last year, we did functional materials in 2019. So this year, actually, we were wondering if we were able to do one conference this year due to the pandemic. And I'm very glad today that we are able to hold this smaller event, but both offline and online. So it's our first time hosting the online event. For those of you who are online there, I thank you for joining us. And if you meet any technical difficulty or any hiccup, please excuse us because it's our first time doing this event. So we hope to do that uh, in the future more. So the, I'm just uh, uh, throwing some thoughts to open this conference. And so the topic today is there are two. One is circular carbon economy. And uh, as an entrepreneur, you always see a lot of our opportunities. And uh, as venture capitalists, we always see a lot of risks. <laughs> so I'm opening the talk to, by sharing what we think are the challenges in the industries. So, so this is the UN's uh, um, a lot of global study on circular carbon economy, and uh, there are broadly five categories. So first is about sharing. So by sharing with sharing product with uh, more people, you use less. The other is product as a service. So it's again as an idea you rent rather than buy. So you also need to use less. And then circular supply chain, which is about how to go from material to waste and recycle and then start again. Product life extension is about how to reuse the product at the end of the life, like battery reuse. And then recovery and recycling, which is about at the end of the life, product life, what should you do to recycle or recover raw materials. So these are all great models. We do see challenges with each model. So for example, with sharing, there's always a credibility challenge. Uh, what, what, what the people will to share, willing to share. And then in the pandemic, all the sharing economy really impacted. So from uh, Airbnb to uh, Uber, for example, sharing car. And the product as service, we actually studied this. And uh, in China, there are a lot of business models about product as a service. But really, it doesn't make much sense if the product is not of very high value. So maybe you can share a car, but we can't think of many other things that you can share. So for circular supply chain, it's actually most of the circular economy currently is quite expensive compared to the traditional methods of manufacturing steel. And there are small scale raw materials available. So we look at many bio, bio material as a, a company, and uh, a lot of them are limited by how much biomaterial there is to uh, make a real impact. 
and the product extension. So a lot of the product has low value at the end of its life. So the product extension itself is also has challenges and the recovery and the recycling. We think actually the biggest challenge is collection challenge and uh, it's the amount of volumes that you can actually collect to, re to recycle. But we today have a stress as the head of uh, uh, waste and recycling and so we can hear his perspective. So as a CM Venture, we are investor in hard technologies. So we, um, we the, only the last three business models are relevant to us. So we are not investing in sharing business model, we are not investing in past business model, and but we are really looking at circular supply chain, product life extension, recovery and recycling. So overall, in our industry, I think there are really three main challenges if I have to group them into the main one. One is cost competitive versus incumbent. That's like really dominant. So a lot of the good ideas, uh, especially in biomaterial or bioderived materials, they are just uh, cannot compete in price versus the oil based or petrochemical based. And uh, so that's one. And secondly, I feel the industry, so human life we have um, the industry has a build product distributed it, and so the whole distribution chain or this distribution network is very developed. But there's nobody there to collect the product back for recycling or, uh, or recovery. So the collection versus distribution is a huge challenge. So if you are looking at business model where you have to collect, use the goods or end of product, it's actually hard to collect at scale. And then, the, yeah, the third point is really about meaningful scale. There are many uh, companies we look at that makes sense locally as a small business, but how do you have big enough scale to uh, make a real impact on the world and also to uh, justify a VC investment? That's uh, the three main challenge for us in the, in the area. But we are happy to say that we actually found the one company that we invest in. So MYS is uh, doing the waste collection and turning into energy and uh, fertilizer. So you will hear later today from Stefan, the CEO of MYS, who will present uh, his story. So for the, his story actually is a very uh, good example of why we are still looking at it despite the challenges in China. Because if you look at the CC investments, China actually has uh, major advantages. So one is uh, economic power. So basically China now has a great impact from large economy and the population. So this, uh, um, if we do something successfully in China, we can actually make an impact in the world. So the, the second is uh, favorable policies. I think there's a lot of excitement from uh, the recent announcement by uh, our president, Mr. Xi, about carbon neutral in China in 2060, and uh, I think in 2030 he just recently set some goal, right? Also about not, uh, the carbon reduction. So the opportunity from favorable policies is a big driving force for CCE in China. Then stable industrial infrastructure and complete value chain is a very big advantage for China because China now is very advanced in lots of industry and we can make anything. We have a lot of manufacturing power. So the industry infrastructure is an advantage. And then world, world leading speed of execution. I think I'm really proud of what we can achieve in China in very short amount of time. And I think the pandemic control is one example of uh, how fast and how uh, effective we can execute at a, a defined strategy. So that's, uh, um, we are hopeful of CC investment in China. And for our new fund, which starts, uh, we are looking at in circular supply chain, so waste to material. So, um, so actually two of the three startups presenting later today are in this category, waste to material. Yeah, one from India, one from China. And then we look at, continue to look at biodegradable, bioderived materials. We are looking at product extension, so EV battery second life is one big topic for us. Remanufacturing is another big topic. And then recovery and recycling, so waste and resource management 
and uh, uh, automated sorting and recycling. So we just invested in as a company in the water treatment uh, startup space, and we continue to to pay much attention. So I think we will hear from great speakers about uh, CCE later from uh, Kevin, who will give a keynote about plastic. Uh, reduction and so on. So I'm really looking forward to uh, the panelist discussion. And so the second topic is uh, digitization today. And uh, Industry 4.0 has been around for quite, uh, um, quite uh, a few years, the concept. And it really goes in phases. So phase one, interconnection. Phase two is about information transparency. Phase three is uh, about decision assistance. And finally, phase four is decentralized decision. So I would say we are still at the phase one and the phase two stage. But the industry already has done, gone up and down. I think we are probably right about here. But we can ask the panelists later today as to what you think. I think the GE launched the predicts to great fanfare, right? We have two people from GE here. And uh, that was probably really the peak of expectation. And uh, uh, now it's uh, well in the bottom here, which is as expected, in fact, in our view. Um, yeah, so because, I, again, for digitization, I'm listing some challenges that uh, we could all discuss in the later conference. So the first challenge is really the edge. I feel I, I had lunch with uh, uh, Eric, who is also talking on the IoT. It's really about where does the data coming from? I think everybody wants to do data analytics. People, nobody wants to do data collection. So uh, people are expecting somebody else is going to do the data collection. So the device side, if you look at, uh, you must first have a device sensing connection and then data sensing and then communication, which is the easy part now with so much IT tool. And then you come to the fun part, which is data analytics, data value, and the human value. So everybody is more interested on the right side. It's more fun. And nobody is interested in the left side, which is about doing the groundwork of device connection, sensing, and so on. So that's one challenge. And the second challenge I feel is really fragmentation. So if we look at the industry, we have people who do IoT platform. GE Predix is a famous one. And then we have uh, in China, Sanyi, Zhongbong, and some others doing the platform, which is about having the data. But uh, you must have the data. People must be willing to give the data. And then you have solution, and a sensor, and a hardware, and then the chip and the algorithm. If you look at any of these areas, actually it's very fragmented. So you need many, many different types of sensors and hardware to address all the industry. And you need many, many different solutions and different algorithms and chips and so on. So the industry is super fragmented. And so that's another challenge. How do you grow a big company in a super fragmented industry? So Eric, you can offer some perspective, but right now probably the industry is very fragmented, right, with lots of small startups. And then the challenges for the big companies or industry, we will hear from DSF and Swiss and the DAT of their digitization efforts. But if you talk to the multinational companies, they are really facing the issue challenge of legacy. So basically we have heavy legacy system which is your SAP or your WMS or your second Latin business driver, which I think is being addressed. There seems to be really strong business driver now to do digitization. We were here. And then the data silo. So basically you have the data in different groups and it's hard to connect together and analyze it. So um, that's the challenges. And we actually, I actually personally run a digital IoT company, Simple. So that's why I'm speaking to you with experience of the, of the challenges. So we are actually about simply connecting everything. So we are doing the edge first. We are doing what people don't want to do first, which is 
to uh, collect and uh, analyze collect the data. So we have two technology platforms. One is RFIE, which is to uh, collect or track item at the item level, and LoRa, which is at the sensor and uh, the IoT level. Yeah, and then we provide a variety of solutions, and we have uh, uh, good customers. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, so I am, uh, yeah. So even with all these uh, big customers, I tell you, I'm not expecting it to be, uh, to be right here yet. So I think we are somewhere here. This is, the in, if you look at the internet, people feel like internet is already ubiquitous and everywhere today, but if you look at from 70 to 90, the internet device literally was flat at zero. So McKinsey came out to say that by 2025, IoT is a $10 trillion dollar business. I think that's very typical McKinsey. It's always <laughs> over predict. And uh, the trend is there, but it's going to go slow. So I'm uh, happy to hear what uh, we are going to hear from the experts this afternoon about digitization. So why did we pick these two topics? It's really, we are looking at are these two trends that have been talked for many, many years, are they going to nice to have, to must have because of the pandemic? So that's the question. So left alone, probably without the pandemic, it's still going to grow but slower, but are we seeing acceleration of the industry shift now that the pandemic occurred? I think that's the topic for today's uh, conference, which is to discuss uh, are we at the inflection point of the industry? What are your perspectives and what challenges do you see? So I really look forward to a wonderful and very expert openings. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>